Let's talk about resolution and getting images ready to use in other programs. And one of the biggest problems that uh, I see students encounter on a daily basis is taking images and putting them into a program such as PowerPoint. And it works out great, everything looks fine, but they end up with a 50 megabyte file. And that 50 megabyte file may be way too big to do what uh, you need to do. So here is an example of how to work with files to get them ready so that you won't have 50 megabyte um, PowerPoint presentations. So you can see here that I've got several files open. And let's uh, start with this one down here. Here's a lovely photograph of a an emerald tree boa that I took at the Indianapolis Zoo. and. Uh, looks like a decent size here looks like a big picture and actually for the resolution I have my computer set to right now it is a fairly large picture I can tell that I'm not seeing the entire picture because it's 56.7 percent of the picture if I want to see the entire picture you just come over here to the spyglass tool and you double click and there it will show you the pixels at 100 percent to move around within the picture to see everything at 100%, hold down the space bar, turns your cursor into a little pointy, or not a pointy, but a grabby hand, and click and drag, and you can move around within your picture. So here I can see it's a pretty decent looking picture, so yeah, I want to use that in my PowerPoint presentation. I don't know why, but I do. Control-0 is the keyboard shortcut I just did, which makes the image fit uh, within the available space so that you can see 100%. And uh, one way to make an image smaller would be to, or yeah, to make an image uh, smaller through file size would be to crop it. But I don't want to crop it. Say, for some reason, I want every pixel that I'm seeing in here. So what I can do is I can come up here to Image, Image Size, and then I get this big dialog box. And this tells me everything I need to know about this picture. Right here, my pixel dimensions uh, at this setting equal 853.1K, and that's pretty decent. Um, that's almost one megabyte. So if I have 50 pictures in a um, PowerPoint presentation, then each one being almost a megabyte, there is my 50 megabytes right there. Uh, PowerPoint itself, unless you do a lot of animation and stuff, isn't going to generate huge files with the pictures that you put in it will. So I can see right here, if I'm doing PowerPoint, I know that my resolution does not need to be anything higher than 72, because the screen that you will be seeing it on can only show it, well, relatively speaking, at 72 pixels per inch. So there's no reason for this to be 150, 180, 300, 200, any of those sort of standard um, resolutions that you might get off of a digital camera. Some digital cameras will take it at 72. Once you know that your resolution is correct, then you want to start looking at your width and your height. And up here you can see it in pixels, and down here you can see it in inches. So you don't know exactly how big your picture needs to be to be on a PowerPoint presentation. But what we care about here is the file size. And I'd like to get this puppy down to about 100K. So I could come in here and say, well, let's make it be 400. And notice how, since these two are combined together, 400 is only going to give you one third of a megabyte. So that's a substantial savings. So I'm going to say OK. And you'll see how the picture got a little bit smaller. But I'm still seeing it at 56.7 percent. Okay, so the next step would be to do file, save for web and devices, and then you'll get this big dialog box which is great. Um, sometimes it'll be set to optimized, sometimes it'll be set to original. I like it to be set to two up, and since this is a picture with a whole bunch of gradient in it, um, nice shifts in color. It doesn't have giant blocks of single colors. Um, I want to use a JPEG. And I'm looking at this at 75 quality right now. And my image size 
is that 400 that I had made it over in the image size dialog box within Photoshop. And if I look right down here at the bottom, I can see I'm down to 51.51K. And I said I wanted it to be 100K or less, so there you go. 75 is good. If I wanted to see, I could pop open the quality and slide that all the way to 100. And that would give us about 111K, but I didn't see a substantial difference in the picture. And you can just highlight the number and change it between 75 and 100. And the beauty of doing this at 2 up is over here, this is your original image with no compression. This is what your image would look like with the compression that you're talking about. So that's actually looking pretty good to me. So if I do File Save and then save it in a nice safe place, let me go ahead and you can see I've got 5,000 files. And there we go. And I'm going to call this same file name so I know what it is, but I'm going to call it small. And save. And now I'm going to close this. And anytime you do save as, it wants to know if you want to save. And I say no because I just did. And I'm going to go back out and I'm going to open those back up, both of those. And uh, there it is Boa Indie Zoo and Boa Indie Zoo Small. Open them both up. I just held down the uh, control key to multi-select them. And for some reason, my system right now is uh, acting like it's been dipped in molasses, so it takes a long time for things to open up. And that is an optimization problem that I'm going to need to look into. I probably have too many files uh, open and too many programs running. And I also am working on Windows XP, not Windows um, Vista which I'm not ready to go to that yet. Anyway, so here I'm seeing this picture at 50%, and here I'm seeing this one. Oops, I accidentally clicked. Now I'm seeing that at 100%. Um, and that's okay, because if I want to see that at 100%, you can see the obvious differences in the size, but it doesn't need to be this large. This right here, I just closed the other file, by the way. This one right here shows me everything that I need to know. And that would be good enough. And I can see that when it's open, it's 332.8K. Go to image, image size. And I know this is the 400 pixel wide image. So life is good. And it's interesting because when you open a picture in Photoshop, it's going to be bigger than when it is uh, sitting on your uh, desktop or wherever you save your files. But that's okay. It was 50K, so that would work just fine. Now I could take that into my PowerPoint presentation. And you'll see here, here's another picture. Nice piece of eye candy. Not a bad picture at all. Problem is, we're at 22 megabytes with this picture. Uh, closed at something like 14, something like that. Um, way too big. And here is the other resolution issue that you're going to run into. You can see it's 72. 72 is good, but it's 3,456 pixels wide. Doesn't need to be anywhere near that big. The last one was 400. So just for grins and giggles, let's do this one at 500. And say OK. And you go, oh my god, that's way too small. But don't forget, look up here or down here, either way one of these two places, and it's going to show you what your zoom factor is. Double click on the zoom tool. That shows it to you at 100%. Click and drag by one edge, and there you'll see that would be plenty big enough for a PowerPoint presentation. You do File, Save for Web and Devices. Come over here, take a look. Remember I said 100K. You know, that was that was okay with me. And this is 68.25K, much, much smaller, considering it was 22 megabytes before. So now, File Save. And I never save over the top of my big file. I always make a, another version, which is why I have 5,000 files, but that's okay. Um, and do Save. And there it is. Now it's ready to go into something like PowerPoint or After Effects or any other program where you're going to have a lot of pictures. And I don't save the, I don't save the changes because that would be saving it over the top of the original one. 
and I don't want to do that. And there you go. That is one way that you can reduce file size.